Well, good morning, YouTube. I'm, we got another, oh, probably good six to eight inches of snow last night. Real wet, heavy snow. If it had been a little bit lighter, we probably would have had a foot. But it's real wet, heavy stuff. Slicker than greased owl shit. <clears throat> uh, I kind of waited this morning. We're going to see get the door I got a set of chains I don't really want to throw them on I seen this morning I checked the roads and Doors Hill were required chains just going over Doors Hill so I was like oh man I don't want to put chains on just to go over Doors Hill just to take them off on the other side so uh, I kind of waited around a little bit after 8 to leave this morning I called a guy that was already down there and he, he told me that he said, yeah, they had the chain sign up. He said, there really wasn't no reason to. He said, it was just slush. So, he said, they had most of it cleared off, and most of it was just kind of slushy road. We'll see. I might have to throw iron on when I get down here, but we got to go. We got to work, so can't little, little. It used to snow like this. This used to be really common, you know, when I was a kid getting snow like this and uh, I think people forgot what it's like <laughs> we had a good 10 12 year period to where we really didn't get snow like we used to get all the time what they call one of those weather patterns so we're kind of putting along here heading down there uh, Good old walk on 35. Oh, you know what, guys? I fixed the speedometer on this thing. I was looking around there, and I didn't pay much attention when I had the... It was already like that. But... I remembered when I, you know, did the front cover that that alternator I only had one wire up to it. Well, I looked down there, kind of hanging down there was another wire, and the... The eye had broke off, and then I found where it went on the alternator, and I put a new eye on there and fixed that, and that speedometer hasn't acted up ever since. I know that a lot of alternators had run the tack, but no, I didn't know it had anything to do with the speedometer. There must have been some kind of interference. I'd have to look up a wiring diagram. I'm kind of curious. I'm sure somebody out there knows, but... My damn coffee cup leaking or something? Got a hole in it or some damn thing? There's, huh? Damn coffee in the bottom of that sun again. We're gonna go down here today. I gotta go to the shop first and get uh, get a truck out of there. I got a reefer, a little reefer unit in there that's got a bad microprocessor on it. The computer's bad on it. It's not grounding some circuits there for the fuel on relay and stuff. And then I've got uh, uh, to get that out of there so they can at least, it's cold enough right now, they don't need the reefer unit. So they're, we're going to order the microprocessor and they're just going to throw their meat in there for right now and go deliver it because hell, it's. 25 degrees so you don't really need the reefer unit anyway but uh, the diesel engine wouldn't start on it it would run on electric standby but not on diesel so anyway we're gonna do that go get that out of there then I'm gonna run out to this hay squeeze uh, heister and I got to talking to a guy in Ontario and he provided me with some information uh, I got to thinking about what he said he must have I must have not been real clear in the video because I'm sure if I told him this he would probably say it's not that there's this thing called the velocity fuse it's in the bottom of the cylinder and it's supposed to keep the say if a hose blow, blows off the cylinder and you've got a load up in the air it's supposed to restrict the oil coming down and keep it from crashing down it's a safety measure is what it is well all that's going to affect is the mass cylinder itself that's not going to if that if that was to hang up that wouldn't affect that wouldn't affect all the other I can't see that affecting the other hydraulics 
just a mass cylinder. So yeah, it, it, everything gets slow on this thing once it once it goes down. And you try to. I think the relief valve on that main valve body is hanging. Is what I really because it's a gear pump, open center system. So I got to find the relief valve on that main valve block and check it. Anyways, I'll be back with you when we get down there. Okay, guys. So we're gonna go back to. Tearing this apart. So anyway, there's a valve in the bottom of the mass cylinder. Okay. And uh what it's supposed to do if that hose blows off, it's supposed to this one here, I actually pulled it out and looked at it yesterday. It's got like a spring and like a oh a little plate with like an orifice. And it looks like to me what if the oil comes and compresses that or something. It seems like to me that it'll slow the flow down coming out of the cylinder so the cylinder doesn't crash down. It'll and when the oil's going the other way to push it up, it'll it'll you know unseat that is what it looks like to me. <clears throat> Anyways, there was nothing wrong with it. And then I got to thinking that's not gonna cause all the other hydraulics to go slow. That's just gonna affect the mass cylinder as far as I can tell. And I called the hydraulic shop and and he said, Yeah, that, that won't that won't make everything else slow it'll just hang up on the mass cylinder when it's go bad so we still got something he's talking to albert there at the hydraulic shop and he said no you got something going on in that valve he said you need to pull that valve back out and if you can't see and i pulled this here and i thought this was the relief we'll go ahead and pull it out of there but there's nothing there's nothing behind it which is kind of odd i thought and twist it. Uh, not too damn short for this service truck. <laughs> I got another small pair of Nipex pliers. Uh, would be better if I had the smaller ones. Uh, there's the large ones. There's the medium ones. Where are the small ones at? Uh, they're all got red handles on them, so there they are right there. There's two pairs of them right there. This is an older pair. The other pair that that guy gave me was uh, the spring-loaded kind where you push the button to adjust them, which is pretty nice. Wow, oh, really? Really? That tight in there, huh? Wow, okay. So what do we got going on? Huh. It's tied in the ends of the pin is what it is, so we gotta yep. keep those in our pocket and get a chisel and try to get behind the sh head of it and get it to work its way out of there. If we can get behind it, may not be able to get behind it. I don't remember it going in that hard.
Huh. That's a little bit odd. Might have to take it up on, off on top. Yeah, I don't remember it going in that hard. Well, that sucks. Let me get to the other side. Damn it, I blew all this off over here. I was trying to get some of the snow and the water off the step so I didn't have to lay in it. hang on to the hammer well this might comprise most of the video I'll be back with you when I get this pile of shit pin out of here okay buddy called there and then of course he's on some screwed up road there where he doesn't have any reception and I lost him about three times and he finally gave up with the phone call so Oh, I kind of hope it'd stay a little bit colder and this stuff wouldn't thaw out like this because this is going to be a muddy mess. So. Anyways, I guess it is what it is. You can't control the weather. Of course, if you talk to an environmentalist, they sure as hell want to. Uh. looks like a flow divider down here on the bottom and that's going to be on the <coughs> that's going to be the inlet over there for the pump okay. I can't imagine that flow divider and there's that little one that goes up to something here let's see now that flow divider trying to kind of gauge this stuff out okay, now that's coming right off the tank is that going to be a return so maybe this is the inlet here no 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 that wouldn't be that'd be a return because the inlet would be coming from the pump so this is the inlet going into this valve this is a husco valve hus pretty sure uh, those are good valves. I think that's a Husco valve as well. But, um, hmm, that's kind of, let's see here. The return goes back. What does that go to right there? Hmm, I don't know. It's just an open center system, but... They did things a little bit different back then than I'm used to than on a lot of tractors I deal with. I mean, there's got to be a relief somewhere in the system. And the gear pump's a positive displacement pump. That means that that pump is always pumping a certain amount of fluid with a certain amount of pressure. So, if there's no load on the system, say a valve's not being used anywhere, then the oil has to go somewhere. And some of them have tandem center valves where the valve has a is ported to where the valve goes back to return when the valve's not when the oil's not being used. And some of them, some of the old stuff I remember used to work against the relief. Some of the tractors actually work against the relief valve. So uh 
what that means is that when it comes up against the relief and there's no demand on the system, then the oil goes back to return. The problem with that whole setup and that that kind of use is it builds a lot of heat. Get another inch and a half. I think I'm gonna get my air hose over here and blow this off again because I'm tired of getting my knees wet. I got a pair of knee pads here, but let's blow this off again and get the damn water off of here. This is just gonna thaw out and run down, and pool up on me. I had it pretty well dried out. And Okay, that's a lot better. Trouble, what are you doing there, bud? I gotta get another inch and a half. Inch or inch. There you are. Looks like my inch and a half right there. These are good wrenches, these SKs. I bought these a long time ago. But the Sunex wrench, it's a lot lighter actually. When you're trying to wheel that big old heavy SK wrench around in tight places, it gets a little heavy on you. Now I got, let's see here, I'm not gonna lose too much oil out of there, are we? No, it's gonna be fine. some plugs but the valve's gonna drain anyway <clears throat> sorry for the huffing and puffing there I'm just I still haven't got rid of all the crap I've gotten rid of most of it from the insect but I've still got some of it in my system called my buddy this morning <laughs> and I said hey what are you doing he goes hauling logs he's got a log truck there and I said you know that you're supposed to just hold that thing wide open drop a gear and just hold wide open throttle because it gets the same amount of fuel economy at, at rated rpm than it does at a lower rpm and he goes are you smoking crack and I said, no, that's what some guy said on the comment. It doesn't matter what RPM you're running, it gets the same fuel economy. <laughs> when, when I worked for the strawberry nursery, the nursery actually bought eight of those track machines at once, and they had two 9620Ts. And the factory guy actually came out from John Deere, not from the dealer, from John Deere. One of the engineers came out. And he wanted to go over some of the implements and stuff they bought, too. Because they bought, you know, millions of dollars worth of equipment. And the engineer came out, and I asked him, where should we run this? And he says, he says, these things have optimal fuel economy and optimum torque at 1800 RPM. He said, anything over 1800 RPM, you're wasting fuel. So I guess everybody at the engineering, I guess they're all stupid, you know. 
I just, I read that comment, I couldn't fucking believe it. Yeah, just, just get you a truck there and just drop a gear and hold her wide open to maintain your speed. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I'd probably like to put a get a double over 13 and put in this and and then half the holes you won't even have to hit. You can use a splitter, you know, and select and pre-select and get where you want to be. And once you get that figured out, you can I I just don't want a six speed or seven speed. Those things are a piece of shit. <clears throat> My buddy had a couple service trucks, Ken Worse, and he said he said he took him out and put nines and tens in them. He said they were always blowing them transmissions up. They just What is that? It's an old two-stroke Detroit over there somewhere. I can hear that screaming Jimmy over there. What in the hell is that? I think it's coming this way, whatever it is. Be curious to see what the hell it is. Yeah, it's a two stroker. I don't know, they it must be down there at Andrews Road or something. doing this go around is just putting a pair of vice grips on that nut and holding it and just impacting it off on the outside uh, and my vice grips are I just used them the other day there's a pair of needle nose vice grips I don't I think some people just make comments to be confrontational. I really do. And I don't really care if you want to be confrontational, that's fine. That's all you got to do with your time. I just laugh about comments like that because <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, gee. Okay, so where where in the hell is the impact sockets? Cause see, I'm, you know, Trevor, Trevor on my Facebook page says, yeah, now you're gonna have a hell of a time remembering where everything is. And you know what? You're exactly right. <laughs> even though I got a lot of that stuff labeled, I still can't remember where the hell I even begin to look. Let's pull this bottom part out of here. That ought to come out. Yeah, that might work all right. Only problem is, <clears throat> I probably have to go fishing for a dim. I got lucky and ended up on the differential. Ugh. Damn it, let's go a little bit tighter here. Yeah, I kind of got a late morning. I kind of just waited around there at the house, waited for the highway department to get Doris Hill cleaned up a little bit and 
How'd we make out? Is it still on there, partially? I guess it is. Maybe... Maybe we should take that off now. And then, uh, let, so we don't drop the valve on the ground. chunk of wire through the eyes on them and handhelds and just kind of pulling it out of there. You know what we need to do is pull this, pull this out of there again. That'll make life a little bit easier on us. I think I'd you know, I think the uh, guy there in Ontario, I think his name was Doyle. I couldn't really hear him real well when he told me his name. I think his name was Doyle. He was real knowledgeable on these things, though. I, I don't know. If, I probably didn't tell him that the other hydraulics were going slow, too. If I'd have told him that, I think he would have probably came up with the same conclusion. That it was something else. I think he was under the impression that just the mast was hanging up, you know. What I kind of find a little bit odd. What I find odd about this whole situation here. So that is the inlet, and it is a Husco valve. Here's the inlet. There's an Allen head there for an adjustable, like if it had a relief in there, but I don't see a relief. Unless this cap down here, this has got to be the relief right here. That's got to be the relief. Okay, guys, I gotta get some more tools out here and figure out what we're gonna do. Okay, here's the relief valve. Three eighths on this. Pretty sure this is a relief valve the way they got this cap on there and there's a Looks like it's really, really collapsed. You can see where that seat's in there. Let's get this. Somebody's got a two-stroker over there. I'm screaming away. Can't have that in California. All the penguins are dying in Antarctica. Dirty bastards. Let's see if we can...
Is that body and thread from that part? Okay, there you go. Whoa! Watch this. It's okay, puppy dogs. Where's my big plastic mallet? Watch this. Used to do this. It used to be fun. We used to do this with kids. to make sure somebody was standing underneath it though when it happened <laughs> now you'd get in trouble for hazing or something if you did that to somebody is this little valve boy she sure has a groove in that seat huh hi dingus hi hi dingus hi okay so that goes in there and that spring will go over that is there anything else to that valve, really? Not really. God, I'm wondering if it's getting up there against that... If it's getting up there against that ridge that's got worn in that seat and it's hanging. Boy, that's got a hell of a ridge worn in it. Well, you'd think there'd be a backup ring or something on that seat right there. But that ain't, <clears throat> ain't much else to that valve. Come on, Daisy girl. So that's the inlet. So oil basically is coming in here. Once that's in there, it comes in through the port here, right around here. That's the relief is what that is. Pretty sure. Might be wrong though. I don't know everything. Sure looks like it to me. God, I wonder if that tapered seat that's got that big old groove worn on the edge of it like that is hanging in there gets up in there once it seats and just hangs i don't know that wouldn't make any sense because it would be hanging if it was going to be hang stuck open it'd be the other way like that to where it was bypassing That doesn't make any sense, that whole idea. <clears throat> what about in here? This is some kind of relief valve or something here too. Or that's That might be a... Guys, is that a priority inlet? I bet that's a priority inlet valve is what that is. And this is the relief with the set on it. That's what that is. That's a priority inlet. here let's look at this daisy girl does this come apart can we put it in here and see if it hangs there's a blunt object to see if the spring it's actually got a needle on it doesn't it and that needle goes down in there so we probably ought to not be Screwing that needle up. Well, that's good. Drop the spring in the snow where you can't find it. I got an idea. Well, we might be able to go easy on this and see if that valve hangs up. Come on, Daisy.
Definitely spring loaded. Don't know how that comes apart, Daisy. Let's take this cap off here and see what we got. Here, see if this old Nimbex pliers will take that off. That's got, yeah, that's that. That's the relief valve right there. That is the relief. Let's back that off. Washers on it there. Okay. Okay. That's the valve. I don't know. There ain't much to it, basically. That's just gonna. Where does it actually. seat up at here's the seat on it right here on this little needle I don't really see a problem with that see a problem with that guys okay guys so I don't I got to talk in the hydraulic shop and I showed him some pictures and he said these are priority inlets with a drain that's what these are so we're going to put them back. We put new O-rings. He said, put new O-rings on them. He said, them O-rings will bleed by and cause problems. So we got new O-rings on them. Where did the... It's starting to cool off a little bit out here now. But I was talking to him. He says, sound like to me you've got something going on with the main relief valve. Because... He said it's affecting all the systems, everything, not just one function. Because <sighs> what happens when 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 it does when you raise it up and you let it down and then nothing wants to work right anywhere. So, I mean, even the clamp doesn't want to squeeze in or out. The tilt doesn't want to hardly work. The mass doesn't want to raise up. It almost acts like the main relief valve is hanging or something there so we might be exploring that and see if we can figure out what's going on with that tighten this up and what kind of find odd is this you'd think there would be a work port relief on this valve section I got an Allen head in there. That's kind of, I don't know what the hell that's all about. That's kind of an odd thing. Kind of weird, you know? <sighs> okay. I got the son of a gun in there upside down. up and that was uh, like one inch I believe <sighs> ok 
Okay, and I got to put this one. I, I pulled this one out of that just to kind of see how it was orientated, how things were put together on it. And I, I had it all together, right? So I'll show you here. Okay, so you got this needle here. Okay. Okay, this seat goes in there. And that bore put a new O-ring on these. Is that going all the way down? Yeah. Okay, then this needle will go in here with the spring on it. And there's another needle in here. This section here, I'll... Uh, I gotta put the brass washer or copper washer back on this. So that seals back up. Where's my screwdriver at? And then that just goes in there, like so. Somehow this works in conjunction with this. Uh, when the oil comes in, this is the inlet, and the oil hits this tapered seat here. It'll shove this up somehow, and it operates that other in-between kind of needle there and hits this one to drain here. So... I'm probably way better and way more familiar actually with a with a closed center system than I am on some of these old things like this. But I think the main relief's back here. The main relief is back here. I don't know if you guys can see this. Get the flashlight in here. I think that's the main relief right there that goes back to the inlet. So that's the inlet on the pump, or the, yeah, that'd be the suction side. This is a discharge on one section here. I think, anyway, might be wrong about that. Might have to follow this other, I don't, I, I, it's got to be the main relief right there. Has to be. Put the other valve block back in there. I don't see anything else. I mean, there's really nothing else. The spools are free. I don't see either one of those hanging up. There's no warp port release in this valve. I'm not really certain what this is all about. This standpipe with this line coming back, like it's got a flow divider or something. Because that small line runs over to this valve over here which looks like a flow divider of some sort i'm not real certain what that's all about yeah so i mean the spools are not hanging up in it there's nothing hanging up in them I don't know. Okay, well, I'm going to tighten that up over there, put all that back together, put this valve back in there. I don't see anything wrong unless, you know, he did say the valve could be shot and leaking by. So, guys, I'm just looking things over and just tracing out the flow path of the oil. 
Okay, so the oil is coming from the main, from the, it's a gear pump back there that runs off the back of the crankshaft, or the crankshaft, off the back of the hay squeeze here. Okay, and then that oil, here's the inlet. Okay, so the oil is coming into this valve right here on the inlet. Okay, uh, this priority valve is going to allow oil to either drain or it's supposed, to, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to split the oil flow to the spools proportionately is what it's supposed to do. And I think they're using this small adjustment on the end as a relief to drain back is what I think they're doing. So anyway, the way this is all plumbed, okay, so oil goes through this whole valve and this other hose over here, you'll see, let me go the other side. What I'm getting at is if there's something wrong in this valve, then it's gonna affect everything. Because the inlet comes in here, okay? The outlet, the basically the exhaust off that valve block is this hose right here, okay? So then this hose right here comes up, comes into the inlet of this valve for the clamp. So the outlet on this valve is feeding this valve that's this hose right here and this is return going back to tank so that valve over there if something goes on in that valve then nothing else is going to work right okay so there's something going on with that valve i got a feeling that valve is probably worn out but anyways we're going to try it again i actually took the I actually took the spool and everything out of the inlet priority out of that one and I put in that one. All right guys, hey, uh, Craig Williams, I was wrong. I never opened the hood really, I was just, it's a 453. Ah. Yeah, it's a 453 Detroit. did guys single time now. We'll let her sit for just a little bit. Put the deck 
plates back in it. Make sure we got everything tidied up here. Oh, I gotta put the cotter pins in those. Look at the piss that I do with those. Up there laying right there. Trouble where them hot cotter pins go, bud. So I got a feeling something was something was in here. See I swapped the inlet priorities from that valve to this valve. There must have been something wrong with that inlet priority. It's not acting up over here, but it sure acted up. It's working every time now. I hate that one, you don't know what the fuck you did to fix it. I hate that shit. I, I hate it when I see something that I physically look at and I can't tell. Maybe them O-rings on them inlet priorities, maybe they were leaking past and allowing everything to bleed off. Hard to say, man. What the hell did I do with those cotter pins? Oh, you want in the cab, partner? Smile for me. Chevel, 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 chevel. You're not gonna smile for the camera? You're not gonna smile for the camera? Come on, Peckerhead. Let's go. Get in there with Duke. Duke was cold and shivering, so I had to get him in the cab. You done shivering, bud? Oh yeah, you're not shaking now, partner. Oh yeah, isn't that nice? That's nice. Okay, I have lost the cotter pin somewhere. Son of a bitch. Okay, well, I guess I got more. I had to hide my donuts in the boxers so the doggies don't eat my donuts. put my ball peen hammer uh, I don't know I don't know but I've been told sometimes this shit gets real old I know don't quit my day job
every time now. This is all plumbed and all these valves are run in series the inlet from the pump comes into this valve block here that runs the the main mast and it runs the tilt so if there's something wrong in that valve with one of those inlet priorities or a spool i think i don't think it was a spool i think it was that inlet priority valve because i swapped that one to that one but i put new o-rings on them as well might have been the o-rings bleeding by on it so if there's something wrong in that valve none of the other functions are going to work right now that we got it off let's just start it again call this job completed guys well guys that's the end of this video but I think I think though uh, what uh, the guy there in Ontario I think I just think he was under the impression that just the mast cylinder wasn't working correctly if that if that if that what do they call that uh, velocity fuse in the bottom of that cylinder it's right there with that hose you can see that hose down there coming in there take the hose off then there's an elbow and then reach up then they take the fitting out of the cylinder and it's in that cylinder so if you take that out of there there's a spring a, a spring and a little oh like a I don't know kind of an orifice type looking it's got three tabs on it and that that and the spool come out of there and I, I pulled all that out of there and then I got to thinking about it I thought well shit if that was wrong only that would not work right everything else should still work right no there's something else going on with this thing so anyways all right guys thanks for watching <laughs>